I am thrilled to have the opportunity to introduce the NOAA Administrator, Dr. Rick Spinrad, to officially open this forum. Dr. Spinrad, welcome. Thank you, Viva, for that very kind introduction. And, and I wanna thank you all for participating in this timely discussion. It really is an honor uh, as one of my first acts as NOAA Administrator to be addressing so many of the people who really care so deeply about and are so knowledgeable about the most critical natural resource to the Southwestern United States, namely water. I've also got to point out that this is personal for me for two reasons. One is uh, I just moved from my home in the high desert of Oregon. Uh, it's not the Southwest, but I think many of you know that the high desert of Oregon is also subject to extreme drought and fires right now. So I can relate personally to many of the issues that you'll be discussing. It's also personal for me because as Viva described in the history of NIDUS and NOAA's treatment of drought and drought information, I was uh, the head of NOAA's research office when we started to develop NIDUS and when NIDUS was officially authorized uh, by Congress. So I have a personal attachment to a lot of the subjects that you'll be talking about. Many of you call the Southwest home, uh, water scarce and therefore sacred in your communities. And over the past year, you've helped your communities respond to and adapt to relentless drought. The impacts have been felt by agricultural producers, rural communities, water providers, tribal nations, and small businesses have been devastating. Drought has become an all too familiar phenomenon. Long-term drought in the Southwest is not only a regional concern, but a key issue of national significance. Like I said, I've lived in the West for many years and I've seen the impacts of drought and wild fire in my own backyard. The West is interconnected and we cannot tackle the challenges presented by long-term drought in the Southwest as a regional issue alone. Let me say a word about the context of this forum. The forum is bringing together decision makers across levels of government, non-governmental organizations, private sector, academia, and scientists who are contributing to our understanding of long-term drought. Each of you has a vital role to play in helping to build a broad network of communities that will be needed to tackle the challenges before us. Today's focused on science and setting the historical stage for how we understand these evolving drought risks in the Southwest. To meet these challenges, which are exacerbated by increasing populations, as well as climate change, we need sound scientific information to stretch our water resources further while we also protect livelihoods and ecosystems. NOAA's world-class earth system and climate science supports vital drought products and services. Over the past two decades, first as head of NOAA's Office of Oceanic and Atmospheric Research, and then as NOAA's chief scientist, and now as NOAA's administrator, I have had the privilege to contribute to many of these critical advancements for drought. Today, our agency is mobilizing for a more arid Southwest by actively engaging in providing early warnings and timely and relevant information to ensure that policymakers make informed decisions with an accurate assessment of the landscape. I would like to impress upon you my main priorities for NOAA and how they tie into the work being done at this very forum. My three main priorities for NOAA are first, establishing NOAA as the authoritative source for what I call mission agnostic climate products and services and expanding and improving our climate products and services. Secondly, fostering economic development in balance with environmental stewardship. And finally, ensuring equitable development and distribution of climate products and services. You can think of these as the three S's and the three E's. The three S's are science, service, and security. Expanding, improving climate products and services. We're talking about the role science plays in supporting services and security. NOAA is actively working with our federal partners and the broader community to establish our role as the authoritative source for mission agnostic climate data and services. For decades, NOAA has provided the best available scientific information, tools, and services on weather and climate to build a resilient nation. My goal is to expand and improve on this tremendous foundation, and this forum is doing just that for drought. As our drought observing capabilities continue to expand and we strengthen our forecasting capabilities to seasonal and sub-seasonal timescales, we can improve our future drought decision support services and deliver earlier warnings of drought to communities nationwide. 
the three E's, environment, economy, equity, and the role of science in all three, fostering economic development in balance with environmental stewardship. According to NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Information, droughts cost the U.S. an average of $6.3 billion annually. These figures use the best available information on agricultural losses, but we know that drought touches many other vulnerable areas of our economy. A critical need for drought early warning is the ability to quantify and predict drought's impact on sectors such as recreation, tourism, industry, uh, energy industry, and manufacturing. Investments in research to better understand these impacts will enable decision makers to quantify, stratify, and ensure economic risks of drought, pivot decision trade-offs as impacts evolve, and build back better after drought events. Being part of the Department of Commerce, NOAA has a responsibility to help communities better understand the economic risks of drought and other natural hazards, while also supporting communities adjusting to changes to their traditional livelihoods. Equitable development, distribution of climate products and services. I was very pleased to see this forum's focus on capturing community impacts and needs, especially those of often underserved rural areas, as well as tribal communities. These communities are on the front lines of climate change, and we must put the full weight of all of NOAA behind them. We're involved in co-development and are committed to defining requirements and needs most equitably and to using traditional ecological knowledge as an important component of our research and development. Let me talk in closing about NOAA's role on drought and the importance of collaboration. According to the 2018 National Climate Assessment, High temperatures are projected to worsen the intensity, duration, and frequency of drought over the coming decades in the Western US. The work being captured at this forum couldn't be any more timely. My hope from this forum is that we tackle some of the most pressing issues we face in the Southwest and that we get clarity on next steps. Through NIDIS, NOAA has proudly supported national drought forums in 2012 and 2019, and they've been valuable opportunities to address issues and put solutions in place. The 2012 forum in particular led to the creation of the Na National Drought Resilience Partnership in 2013. It is through the NDRP that NOAA and other federal agencies have ensured that drought response and resilience efforts are coordinated and guided by the best available data, research, and information and that policymaking and scientific research advance aggressively, hand in hand with each other. So we take these engagements very seriously. I applaud your efforts and look forward to advancing them further. I will stand ready to leverage our interagency partnerships further as we take an all of government approach to addressing the climate crisis. Thank you very much.